Good morning, afternoon and evening all. This is Yorkie with some F1 2013 gameplay. And we're going to be looking at the classic cars with something that's a little bit different to probably what most other U F1 YouTubers provide. And that in itself is a uh, special little peripheral called Track IR. And the version I actually have is Track IR 5. Track IR itself has been out for quite a long time. There's been a number of iterations of it over the years. But it's basically a motion sensor that tracks head movement. Uh, it's a very, very nifty and very cool piece of kit. It comes with a little sensor that sits on top of the monitor, which uh, picks up, or well, it's an infrared sensor that picks up uh, head movement uh, from a second sensor that sits either on top of a baseball cap on the front that kind of rests on the on the lid of the baseball cap or you can get a little uh, clip that tracks to the the um, you know the side of the headset that's what I was gonna that's what those are the words that I was looking for the side of the headset and yeah it's very very cool for games that allow uh, independent head tracking head tracking movement such as obviously F1 it works Otherwise, I'm going to be doing a video on it. Uh, Armour, if you ever play Armour 2 or Armour 3, those games support it as well. Obviously, Flight Sims are quite big and well-known games that allow for this piece of kit. Project Cars uh, hasn't got it yet. Uh, they are... The devs have said that it will be in the game at some point. It's just in the current in its current uh, form, there is no... There is no support for it. Uh, I imagine iRacing and also R Factor probably have it as well. But it's yeah, it's insanely good for uh, cockpit cams and all that sort of thing. You can oh, as it go and crash into the barrier. Fantastic start. As you can see straight away, I can move. This is me moving my head around, looking from left to right. Probably about 30 degrees of my head movement equates to about 90 degrees in game. You can also lean left and right as well and look up and down. But one of the things that really, really struck me about using Tracker whilst driving around in cockpit cam was how natural everything felt as I go and lock the front wheel and crash into the barrier. So, yeah, this is going well. But, yeah, how, everyth how natural everything felt. <laughs> go ahead and stay there on the road. I've probably gone for too, uh, brake pressure's too high. But yeah, as you can see, it's kind of, you think it's like a little bit like Need for Speed Shift, where, you know, the head in the cockpit cam kind of naturally moves towards the apex of the corner, but this is me, just natural head movement. You, you probably, some of you may have realised if you really do focus and think about it, but your eyes and head kind of tend to naturally look in towards the apex of the corner anyway, even when the camera is fixed. So even straight away without having to force my head to move to look around, I'm already getting a nice smooth fluid subtle head movement to exactly where I want to be looking. and. The immersion that brings is unbelievable. As you can see, coming through Casino Square, I can look into the apex no problem, and you know still focus on actually driving. Also, can you can check your mirrors before a corner as well, and the hairpin here you can see all the way around, even before you come out the exit of the corner. So if someone's you know spun or stuck in the barrier on the exit of that hairpin, I'm going to be able to see that before anyone else who's driving in cockpit cam or in a T-cam will be able to see it because obviously their cameras are in a fixed position. So this provides quite a big advantage. Well, I wouldn't say it's overly massive, especially at the start, because uh, one thing I've noticed from driving with this is lap times are down. Your you kind of you tend to bump into things a little bit more as you've probably seen already if you're not focusing a hundred percent basically this is, you kind of you kind of lose your sense of positioning compared to what you're 
used to with a fixed cam. Obviously, you create your own reference points, and with those, you kind of you, you obviously you build your line and you drive the circuit as quickly as possible, knowing exactly where to break and when not to break. And mostly, do you still have that with this? Obviously, with the head movement as well, it's just that little bit more difficult to really pick it up and. You know, sometimes you can you can misjudge things. You can end up going out wider and clipping the barrier a lot harder than you know you thought you would. But yeah, this is. Hopefully, you guys are finding this just as immersive as I am actually driving around. Hopefully, your eyes are able to keep up because I can move my head pretty quickly and I know exactly where I want to be looking. So if I want to check the mirror, just like that, real quick. I can do it, my eyes are already there and you know everything's all nice and crisp and sharp whereas for you guys you're probably looking all over the screen and wondering what the fuck it is that I'm looking at and trying to play catch up with with the head movement hopefully it's um, hopefully it's not making you feel nauseous or anything like that as it's certainly something that I want to include in all my gameplay from here on out in uh, in cockpit cam anyway. I've gone used to the cockpit cam now for F1 2013. I actually enjoy using it because you know the mirrors work. I can actually see <laughs> see cars behind me. I've actually also turned off proximity arrows now because of this. Obviously, with working mirrors combined with Track IR5, which I now have, and also a very nice gaming headset, which I've had for a couple of months now. Your positioning and awareness of other cars around you is is you know a lot lot better if it was to be in a fixed cam. So I turn proximity arrows off to make it just that little bit more challenging for myself. Also, you know, trying to improve the sense of immersion and gameplay as the rear wheel is just you know mightily locked up there. Sticking me into the barrier. And yeah, it's just, ah, oh, it's so much better, especially with uh, other cars on the track. And I'm actually going to stop driving around Monaco now and actually show you how good it really is with, with other cars on the circuit. Because obviously, in time trial, when you're just on your own, you're looking at, well, you're looking into the apex all the time. You're not looking around, you're not looking off to the side at other cars around you. I'm actually going to stick this in clear because... I'm not really a fan of racing in the in the wet at the moment with track AI. It's kind of a little bit distracting. Um, I go Brands Hatch. It's always a good track. Very fast, very flowing. So yeah, rather than just looking towards the apex, you're actually watching the, all the other cars around you. So when you go past one, you could be you could be watching that car, making sure that you're not bumping into him or anything like that. And we're gonna jump straight in, and I just you know, I'm gonna stop waffling and show you just how good this, how good this actually is. So, spare me a second whilst I get comfy. There'll probably be a little bit of uh, extra head movement going on as I kind of shuffle around in my seat. Uh, I'll reset, reset the position, and five lights, and that's quite a long hold. I'm actually away now. I haven't got the starts down on these turbo cars yet. I've got 100T coming up my inside now. There's a little bit of contact. So yeah, you kind of your head looks, you, your head goes all over the place trying to look where you are in relation to all the other cars. And. As you probably noticed already, you kind of you tend to watch the other cars around you more than you watch the apexes of the corners coming up. I almost had to look down the inside there, but it decided to back out. And yeah, it's, the incessant immersion just goes through the roof when you're racing against other people. Online, it can be very, very cool. Although also it has caused much frustration. So get 
right up underneath, underneath the rear wing of that 100T. It looks like I'm past him into turn one, although he's coming back at me even more so now that I've actually run wide. Oh, the Williams is there as well. Didn't realise that. He is right in the rear view mirror. You can see that. See, that's the really cool thing about this is you don't have to focus on the road ahead. You can watch the cars in your rear view mirror whilst also still, you know, driving like that fast left hander back there. I was actually constant. Well, I had my head down to look in the rear view mirror, but my eyes were constantly darting backwards and forwards to the track up in, up in front of me and also into the rear view mirror as well. Just so obviously. I could drive a corner and also see where he is in relation to me. I'm actually going to go for that move down the inside there. Get that one done quite nicely. Chasing Mansell. Oh, he breaks very early. Jesus. Almost ran it straight into the back of him. And this is just so much cooler. So cool with the classic. Classic cars, all the sparks, the spitting flames, and the open, the openness of the cockpit as well. So obviously, I can look pretty much a full 90 degrees and look down at the side pods. You see the little gold logos that are on the side there. See all the sponsorship. Whereas in an F1 2013 car, you know you got the the uh, I'm trying to remember what it's called. You know the enclosed, the enclosed cockpit. Now it's the hands device. That was it. For some reason, I was kicking the hands headset. I'm pretty sure it's the hands device. So we're all over the back of Mansell now. I'm just going to go to the inside. I got that done relatively nicely, although well away from the apex. And um, now uh, we've got to chase Schumacher. Go set the fastest lap of the race. And I've actually had some very cool move, uh, moments with track uh, as well. As I've had people spin in front of me, and you kind of you watch them spin in front of you. You kind of you head. Oh, he's still there. He wants to hang out on the outside. That oh, he's back down now. Yeah, you kind of watch the car go from left to right across the front of you and that's been very cool. Also in the garage as well, um, when you when you go into track obviously it plays that little animation of uh, the guy walking over picking up the monitor off the car and then hanging it up and obviously your car gets lowered and you drive out of the garage. You can actually look around in that so you can you can look over and watch the guy walk over to you to pick up the monitor which is extremely cool has a very cinematic and lifelike feel. Just kind of really puts you in the mindset and the head of the driver. And we're actually going to try and see if we can catch Schumacher before the end of the race. I doubt we can. But, you know, no harm in trying. Already taken a good at least four attempts off of him. He was three point something. On the start finish. Straight. Another two attempts through that sector. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to catch him as we were way, way wide. Just about managing to hold on to that. So, we're going to finish in second, which isn't too bad, I suppose. But hopefully, that has given you a very, very good insight into Track AR5. And, well. Hopefully you guys enjoy it as much as I do and have found it just as immersive or something, you know, unique to other F1 gameplay videos. But, yeah, this is probably a step down from Oculus Rift, because obviously Oculus Rift, it has all the same sort of stuff, but the camera's right there in front of your eyes, whereas this you have to, you know, still focus on your monitor screen. But nonetheless... Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Please give it a rating. If you have any comments or questions about Track IR, 
and also the gameplay in this video please post them in the comments below and of course don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more f1 content in the future i shall hopefully see you soon guys take care